Hi, right, welcome back to Meteorology 101. In this video, I want to look at that snowstorm coming through the uh, high pressure to the north and a little bit of convection over Florida, not much going on down there. A lot of convection over uh, the Gulf of Mexico, right around Cuba. So let's uh, break this system down. We've got a lot of instability in the central U.S. Looks like a jet stream. To the north let me get my drawing tool up here so it looks like we have a jet stream polar front jet down here looks like a subtropical jet a little bit of ridging in the south west looks like some over uh some serious blow off over down there and also right around new mexico up into colorado we do have a little bit of convection down there um, looks like some more graphic lift or something causes some clouds in that area. Got a lot of instability all through here with these streets. And then we have tons of instability right over there. A highly modified air mass that the high pressure system comes up in that area and then pushing through. So we have basically the frontal system right through there with the look at the surface chart we'll place that and then we'll place this weather an active front cold front that's uh all the weather is at and behind the front so we'll pull up the uh, thickness chart we'll see where our rain snow line is where it comes down around that high pressure system where our freezing levels are and if it's going to be rain snow mix get an idea there so if you look to the north it looks like a little bit of a rotation up there like a low pressure system so we'll have to see where exactly where that low is and then if there's a uh, front coming out of that low straight down into the central pretty much the midwest so we'll have to see what's going on with this high how high that high goes into the upper levels and then um, what's causing all this instability with the high we this may be a such a cold core system that it's low high, low higher heights and then it's got a a um upper level low what to see how that goes so that's the current satellite all right so we're going to do a surface chart first place our highs and lows All right, so like we said, we had a uh, high to the north, ridging down, all the way down into Texas. We have a low pressure system over uh, southeast California near the Four Corners. So that's what we were seeing in uh, that. We were seeing a little bit of troughing. We got that convec convection up into uh, Colorado and New Mexico. So we have a low pressure system indicated by the charts over West Virginia. We'll have to see if that's actually there. We'll pull up some more data. Let's pull up a, um, let's pull the isotherms. Let's look at our thermal gradient. We get a good placement on our front. We'll pull up the uh, surface plots. With our thermal gradients, I see a just a cold core system here. Some moderate snow, moderate snow, light snow. So 20 knot winds out of the north, northwest. Then we're shifting over to the west, northwest, northwest. And then we've got a wind shift here, wind shift here. You can see that one. Get rid of all that. So I can see a wind shift there. Wind shift here. So there's our trough. There's going to be where our front placement is. So if we look at these temperatures, looks like 74 and 40. So we definitely have that cold front right there. We got 60 and 47. There's 60, there's 47. So we can bring that front over around that high pressure system. Uh, winds 
kind of all over the place through here actually pushing right around that high from the southeast then pushing out of the north so highs rotate clockwise around a high and out of a high so they're always going to push out toward the high they're going to go away from that high, high center so if you look at these uh wind directions we got some uh, divergence there that just means the winds are going away from each other right here we have some convergence that means winds are going toward each other so right there in uh new mexico we got that low level convergence get rid of this mess we can uh see where we had that significant cloud cover right in that area so we still have some here too all this converging right in that area so that's where we're stretching up into uh colorado so we see that low level convergence causing that all through that area all right so ifr conditions we got all these red pretty much through the great lakes region stretching down into indiana into illinois and then uh some moderate snow light snow and the ifr conditions are just uh ceilings are between five and one thousand feet basically below a thousand feet and visibility is uh, less than three miles so if we look at this chart let me clear that out again we can see let me get a uh, get rid of this draw tool you can see um trying to see if I can see one that's reporting visibility ceilings like 400 feet right there this ceiling's 8,000 feet 2,500 feet anything with that C you see 4,200 feet you see the C and then the number that 85 years times that by 100 so the ceiling's 8,500 feet in that area all right so let's look at Let's do the fronts on here real quick and we'll see where what the computer generates for fronts. All right, so that's placing low over southern Indiana. The cold front stretching down into another low, but that's these lows. That's just seeing a little bit of rotation right there, so it's kind of throwing these lows in there. But we did have that low pressure system, that rotation to the north, up north of the Great Lakes region. So We'll get that like it looks like a post front and then the uh other low pressure system to the northeast well off to the northeast and then that frontal system coming down so we have to see really not a lot of advection going on here we see our tight we got a tight thermal gradient so we could place that front that's pretty accurate on the placement of that front and then wrap it around that high so if we go look at these wind directions temperatures we definitely placed the front and now being winds out of the north that's going to be a cold front a cold air advection right there not warm so that's pretty much wrong there it's going to be pretty much cold front all the way through and then we can go wrap around that high if you want to look at the temperatures and the wind directions here so let me get rid of this stuff pull this out of here get rid of those fronts we could start seeing get some of this data because it gets a little cluttered on here all right so there's a 60 52 47 49 so that front's going to drop well we got to watch our winds too so we get the wind shift right here so that front's going to come through here but we gotta watch the temperatures and the dew points so we got a 44 dew point 44 so bring that cold front back around this way a little bit and then we can see our wind shift right through there so probably have like a if this low is here we have a warm front right there and then pull back around this high with another that other that cold front right there so got a little bit of a low pressure system possibly forming up right here see i don't see too much of a wind let's see some curvature we got a pretty good trough right there so we can almost put a low pressure system right there that's not too far off 
All right, so getting into this frontal system, replace that front right here in the wind in the wind shifts, the temperatures. Let's get a good look at this. It's like that's like 66, 53. So we'd have the southwesterly flow right there. Northwesterly flow right there. So we're gonna bring that front down through here. And then we can see all of our weather back behind that front. Okay, so now what we want to look for next is go up to the 850. We'll look for a wind shift. See if there's a trough back behind there. We could place an upper front. And then we can see the slope of that front. And if that front is how depending on how far back it is, it's since the weather looks like it's going to be behind the front i would say it's a shallow slope so we should see a front pretty far back and then all the weather associated at and behind the front is an active cold front so let's get a look at that like i said this thermal gradient though real quick is uh so we can see this but when we have thermal ridging and troughing and then we have a tight real tight thermal gradient right there so that's where we said where our, our jet was so we pull this jet stream pull our front jets drop it to the south pretty far and then we said with based on that satellite we maybe had a uh, subtropical jet to the south but this is being a tight thermal gradient we know our jet stream is right through there now we have a long wave trough thermal ridging and then the major short wave associated with the cold front right through there out of that low so all right let's go to the 850 real quick um first off look at all this moisture all that black even the blue i mean it's all solid anything that's got a solid uh cloud cover in that you know you're in a high pressure system ridging in ridge this the high pressure system usually suppresses moisture so that's what it tells me you got something in the upper levels there with this thermal ridging you know going higher into the upper levels this high pressure system is probably just mainly in the lower levels and that's just cut undercutting that warm moist air in the upper levels and then just pushing all this moisture up right above it and back behind this front and then the clouds just stretching all the way back through that high so that's a real shallow high pressure system that's why we got all that all that cloud cover because typically high pressure is a suppresses moisture it'll just dry out and air partial real quick so now uh, with the national radar we see uh our frontal system right through the midwest and then we said it was covering down around that high pressure system that was ridging in so like i said instability instability we've seen the there's uh cloud streets through here and then we've seen a lot of uh like strata q all through this area there's a lot of instability so we did seem kind of two separate little air masses going on there if we look at uh we had the high pressure system and then we had this uh the high stretches all the way down but we had um like i said the thermal ridging there we had convection right here really one convection we we just seen some pretty good a little bit of cloud build up in uh, New Mexico, possibly that rotation. Uh, we see that low level convergence, and uh, but really nothing doesn't look like any even any precip there on the radar. So that's where we're seeing that. And then uh, we've seen that low to the north, and then we've seen uh, you know, like I said, we set our cold front coming in down here. So we got a little bit of precip in the mountain range, and then some convection. We've seen that on the satellite, we can see those. There's supercells down by Cuba and a little bit further south and then um, a little bit going across uh, Florida. So, well, like I said, we've seen two separate little areas. Like, like I said, there was cloud streets and then we've seen the, uh, just a bunch of, looks like strata Q just kind of all through this area. So right in the center of that high. So we know our fronts here. We had an active cold front. We had to see what the slope is. Where's our upper front? once we get into the upper levels and then then see how high that high pressure system goes and then 
what's in the upper levels causing any instability or any precip to fall through that high being that cold that cold core high and uh, causing that snowfall there but with to see what's going on here if we have a warm layer a loft that's causing all this to be rain instead of snow so we'll have to take a look at that um let's go do a uh, thickness chart get rid of this drawing All right, so I'm going to do uh, sea level pressure. We're going to just do the basic isobars, place our highs and lows to do the thickness chart. Then we're going to go up to uh, 500 millibar. Actually, we're just going to run a thickness, 500 millibar thickness. So it'll be 1,000, 500 millibar thickness. To get our thickness lines from a thousand, how thick the atmosphere is from a thousand to five hundred millibars. We get that in there, and then we can see our uh, five forty line, the fifty four hundred meter. That line, and that's going to be our rain snow line. We'll see anything north of that's going to be snow. The five forty line, we're going to see. And you can see that thickness just kind of circling around right there. So where did that go up, and then? There's our 540 line. So the 540 line is your rain snow line. Anything along that line should be mixture. This is just a rule of thumb. So for a quick chart to look at to see if you have where the rain and snow is going to be. So everything north of this should be snow. And then everything to the south should be rain. And then to uh, everything along this should be a mix. Okay, so this cold core system here, we got... This is all lower heights here. So it looks like this high pressure system ridging in to the south. And then those high, those lower heights, we got 5,160 meters. That's a real low height right there. And then starts to come up, up. So you think of this as like a, uh, a topo, topograph uh, map that shows you a uh, terrain. So you think of this as a mountain. This would actually be a valley. It sinks down in and comes back up so that's what uh the lower heights means just think of that as a valley so now when you get that cold that cold core you can get with being like a valley that freezing level drops can drop way down so when that happens then you can actually get depending on what's on the upper levels but you can get snow in this area and not up in these other areas so like we were seeing, we got rain kind of all through here. Snow around the end of that high. And then that snow line right along that front. So we had that front frontal system right there. So snow, rain, snow. So we'll have to, we're going to have to look at that closely. And uh, maybe see what soundings we could pull in that area. And see what we got for, uh, if we got any warm layers in the upper levels. Or if that radar is just off. We'll pull up local radars all through that. And uh, go back up into Montana and see what we got for what types of precip. All right, so one more thing, we'll just pull the uh, surface plots on this. Make it a thickness chart, true thickness chart. So your thickness packing too, you said if we pull Wait for those surface plots to come up. There they are. So, if you look at the thickness lines, like I said, that's this thickness chart is a good indication of your jet stream too. So, good look at that jet coming down, back over around these thickness lines, and then right there's your polar front jet with a long wave, long wave trough. So, all right, cloud cover all through the center. Now, that's typically like I said when you're ridging in that could that could suppress the moisture so it should suppress the moisture but we got something else going on let's look at this uh go to the upper levels all right let's go to the 850 that's about 5,000 feet up 
pull 5,000 feet height. And we'll see where our low is on the surface, way up in the Canada. Actually, there's a, ignore that high. We'll get, we'll get our uh, isotherms. And then we'll do uh, do the plots also. Let's just go ahead and build the chart. We'll do the moisture here in a minute. So we can see where all our moisture is at 5,000 feet. So where we got significant moisture and uh, any precept falling through that high. So that high, we can actually back, kind of push back a little bit on that. Uh, I mean, we've got pretty, it's still pretty strong but over the uh, rigid end of Colorado and then uh, the panhandle of Texas. So I mean, it's still pretty strong high, but it looks like it's stacking uh, back just a little bit to the west. So it's still Bear Clinic. We do have uh, thermal advection around that high. So that's creating that ins instability too. So let's go with uh, with our plots. And so ignore this high down the bottom. This chart doesn't get a lot of data in Mexico, so it kind of just throws a high, crazy high pressure system down there. So, all right, now if we place our fronts, the surface fronts on this 850 chart, then we can get an idea of where the surface fronts were, which we said that was pretty accurate as far as that computer screen. The computer generated fronts that was pretty close except for that warm front that's basically a cold front all the way through so let's pull up the draw tool and we can see where our maybe where our upper front is so we got a wind shift here troughing there troughing there got a shift here so we're looking at our front cutting through there right there behind that so that's a pretty decent front we, we had this front and then we're stacking back so we have a active cold front basically a shallow slope we'll look at the 700 see where that one is and then looks like some ridging in there but that, this we got some troughing right through the center of this so that could be our upper level you know we got an upper level low indicated right there. So there's our instability for all that moisture that we're seeing associated with this high. Any of that snowfall falling through that high pressure, the cold core system there. We see that uh that colder air is where our 540 line you know was down here and then came up. So anything to the north of that was should have been snow. We did have some rain over this way, so we have to look at what's going on there um like i said see if that's real or not and then uh but we got this low pressure with the uh with the rid the uh troughing so there's our instability to cause any kind of moisture um if we have any moisture instability over that high pressure system causing all the precip right over that high so the highs on the surface the lows are the upper levels so the high pressure can't suppress that moisture that it's all associated with that upper level low. All right, so that's our precept. There's our cloudiness. Now, if we do, we're going to be looking at cloudiness all through here. Cloud cover, significant moisture. We're pretty much saturated in these areas. So, pretty close to getting there we're looking for dew point depressions of five or less a dew point depression is the difference between the temperature and the dew point so like this temperature is six degrees it's four degree it's a four degree dew point so it's only two degrees difference so anything that's less than five five or less is going to be colored in with a uh, black station plot and that's going to indicate significant moisture in those areas so you're going to have cloud cover thicker cloud cover or you're going to have possible precept in those areas so which we know we got that big line of snow and then we have pretty much precip all through these areas um pretty much moving to the east because you got uh with these balloons that are let loose they're let they're let loose every 12 hours so um i think it'd be eight o'clock eastern time 8 p.m is when the next one would be let loose and by the time the data comes out you know it'll be uh We'll be a little bit behind but this um this data is probably from uh like seven o'clock this morning 
or eight or seven or eight o'clock about eight o'clock this morning so be eight o'clock in the morning eight o'clock at night when they launch the balloons all right so get rid of that and now we're seeing our upper front get rid of all this and we can actually go pull some moisture pull some moisture up on this chart at the uh, 5,000 feet height 850 millibars and this will show us also where our moisture is like I said we drew the moisture on there based on the station plot so this is a 60% humidity so this will give us a little bit more moisture anything that's 60% or greater so any of those uh, lines, those station plots that aren't colored in, you, you'll still get moisture because that's looking for a uh, lot more moisture on these uh, black colors. And then we got 60% humidity here. So that's pretty much why I show moisture all the way through that area. But we know we got significant moisture to cause that precip. Because we got the precip falling through the high pressure system. And let's go up to the 700. And there's another rule with the active cold fronts we can look at on the 700 millibar. See where the moisture is at 700. Now 700 millibar is going to be about just under 10,000 feet. About 9,800 feet. Alright, so we still see we got significant moisture. all through that area precip so we're still hanging in there pretty good on in the uh up there about um right around ten thousand feet so another thing we see is this low so and then we could probably do let's go ahead and uh real quick shut this off we got we'll get that back in a minute we'll go um station plots at the 700 millibar so we're still bare clinic we'll pull that up in here a minute let me get this let's get these station plots going okay so this is pretty accurate with the 60 percent humidity we're we're actually pushing pretty good where all of those stations that are colored in black significant moisture 10,000 feet so we're doing all right right there okay we had our low to the north we could almost do another front an upper front from here so we know we had our surface front then we had that other the 850 front and now we're looking for the 700 so look for any uh minus 11 minus 9 minus 18 so we do have a little bit of a shift here nothing not, not really significant um actually we do right there so you can almost place a trough there. Here we go, right here. So now we can almost place that front is actually starting to be. We know we had that other front. It was kind of right through there. That's actually about where the uh, 850 and the 700 are pretty much going to be almost vertically stacked at that point. So we had a slope and then it becomes vertically stacked. And then we still have thermal advection in this area. So that's a pretty significant system. I mean that's a pretty strong low there anyway so um let's look for uh there's our troughing right there it is indicating pretty good on that so that's where our upper front's going to be right through there so we actually we're stacked we're still stacked back if we go from surface to 850 and then to 700 all right, so up to 10,000 feet. So we have an upper front. I mean, we're we're stacking pretty good. So all that moist, warm moist air at and behind that front just keeps getting pushed up because this air mass is still stacked up pretty good at that uh, 10,000 feet mark. So now we we can obviously we just see we don't have the uh, the high. So we do have troughing in this area, so that's going to cause a, a lot of instability along with that moisture. So we have troughing, a little bit of ridging there. And then the troughing so a post frontal trough and then so now we're getting 
where we're saying, okay, that little bit of ridging in this area, what do we got? We got that, um, all that snowfall, then we're going to rain, and then we're going to snow. So kind of makes sense with the, uh, with the trough, the ridge, and then the trough. So, you know, maybe that ridge has something to do with it. The um, thermal ridging, I don't really see any major thermal ridging. You know, I see a little bit right through here. So I don't see a lot, you know, that's going to be causing like warm air being pushed to the north to cause that warm pocket. Um, like I said, we need to pull some soundings and see what, see what we're working with on that. But these are from the 8 o'clock this morning, so they're going to be old anyway. But unfortunately, it doesn't matter, you know, if you're with the weather service or not. This uh, Those balloons, they let them go every 12 hours, the National Weather Service. And it doesn't matter what weather station you're going to have old data. So these charts used to come out. <clears throat> The upper air charts come out every 12 hours. Used to be uh, the National Weather Service used to actually process all this data, put them on a nice chart. We had to go in, analyze them, reanalyze them, color those charts, color this moisture, and uh, see what we had for the upper levels, and then um, check out the vorticity and all that, and um, then do our forecast off these charts every 12 hours. So when you're getting this data only every 12 hours, you're trying to forecast what's happening in the upper levels between that 12-hour gap. You know, it can get pretty, pretty tricky to do that. So, um, you get an upper level low form or coming through, uh, any kind of moisture associated with them upper level systems. And you, know, there's a lot that can change in, in 12 hours. So you start getting late in the day like this, you can get a lot, your forecast can just be blown, um, completely. So people wonder why they get it wrong, but, um, until you had to sit on a desk and do this yourself then the truly you know you'll you'll never understand so that's why i do these videos to try to help people start to understand what's actually going on what data we're using how to look at these charts and determine you know what are we using um what is actually happening in the upper levels i mean how much changes in 12 hours and then you know be able to base that on what's actually happening on the ground how much it's already changed from the chart to the surface to the radar to the satellite and then see what that system is actually doing is this system getting stronger is that system getting weaker is it starting that low starting to fill you know as we get we got a uh still we have the contours and then we have the isotherms crossing those contours then we have a bear clinic system that is bear clinic that that means they are uh perpendicular to each other so um that means you have an unstable system still even at 10,000 feet so that's a pretty good this is a pretty intense system typically what you'll get is when when you start getting the uh isotherms become more parallel with the contours then that's when that system starts to fill from the bottom up it's getting weaker and then you don't have cold air being pushed down around that low and then causing more lift in the upper levels to cause more instability so when you get that cold air advection pushing down now you have cold pushing into the warm air you got cold air over warm over the lower warm air so you got cold over warm that's an unstable environment warm over cold is a stable environment so that's what you got to look for these contours so see the contours actually i'm just kind of scribbling here the uh contours and these isotherms are kind of parallel to each other so that's getting stable but way back in this area so is this trough begins to fill then that will become weaker and weaker and weaker and then the isotherms will become start becoming more parallel and then that low pressure system will actually start the upper level low will catch up with the surface low and then they'll start being more vertically stacked and then that starts filling from the surface up so hopefully you're learning something on this okay so we're at the 700 we need to go to the 500 at least and then maybe look at the 300 or the 250 take a look at the jet stream that's going to give us our support and then at least say hey you know at least we know what's going on at the surface what's going on in the upper levels and then we need to try to find some soundings in these areas see if i can get one up real quick just to uh just do one over here in ohio because i know that one let me go to uh 
display. Here's Wilmington, Ohio. All right, so there was a pretty decent inversion present, almost at the surface, and then um, a decent lapse rate, and then we had another inversion, pretty strong inversion, up to uh, almost 5,000 feet. And then we actually have little tiny inversions all through the upper levels. But the moisture, significant moisture, you're looking at 5 degrees. Each one of these lines is 5 degrees, or it's 1 degree, so... If we're, as long as we're within that five, that we know we got pretty much saturation. So we had, you know, we were pretty cloudy, looked like this morning, and then we had uh, drier in the upper levels in the big dry area, and then we got all the way up to uh, 40,000 feet, and then that's where pretty much, I would say the 40, well, it's not 40,000, that's um actually probably about 20,000 feet, let's see, 23,000 feet actually on the 400 millibar. 23,000 feet we had uh, high clouds and then getting up to 30,000 feet maybe some cirrus and then getting on all the way up into those upper levels once you hit that tropopause now you can see the inversion when you hit the tropopause you can always see there's almost not much of a temperature change with height so right there is, is following that temperature line that's where your tropopause is so right above the two right around the 200 millibar mark it's about 38,600 feet and that's where we hit the tropopause and then it's just a stable environment up there so moisture all the way from 400 millibars like i said 23,000 feet to 30,000 feet and then low level moisture so Seen a lot of low clouds today. I didn't see any really any mid clouds. I did see the upper upper clouds, uh, higher attach. So <coughs> we did see that. Um, so this was pretty accurate for this morning. Now build this chart, and then we'll put up a 500 millibar vorticity chart. See where our instability upper level divergence is. So you can see the moisture right there popping up right there in uh, Iowa. Nebraska, northern Missouri. That's a lot of uh, significant moisture loss compared to the other charts, but we do still have this low pressure system. And now, so let's talk about what. Uh, we let this thing finish here, and we'll get get the draw tool out and cover some details on this thing. All right, so. All right, we got that low. We got troughing, ridging, troughing. Okay, so no thermal advection. Got the contours. Then the isotherms. And like I said, see how they're going parallel? These upper level system is uh getting pretty weak so we cross right there cross right there a little bit of thermal advection in that area with the great lakes region so with the low pressure system actually over here it's looking at that one there let's see no nope, it's going to be right here where i had it the first time so with that low there <clears throat> thermal advection we do have right through here And some weak thermal advection right there. And then maybe a little bit of weak of this right there. So right there we got some thermal advection. Right there where that moisture is. We're going to have precip in that area. Instability over the Great Lakes region. And then we're going pretty much parallel. And then that this low. The surface low is out here. So we'll catch up with that. When this low catches up with that low. They become vertically stacked. Then this thing will start weakening pretty, pretty good. But right now this is a pretty significant system i mean if this was this was a low that started in the over the gulf and just sucked up all that moisture and then pushed to the northeast and developed like this we'd be we'd be pretty hammered right now um the high pressure system where that front went through you were still going through we uh 
got that all that precept you know right along that uh at and behind that front so um everything is right there with it let's go uh we're calling this an active cold front so <clears throat> i want to get rid of this drawing tool I right, said so some basics about an active cold front. Let's go. Uh, and before I get started on that, let's do the 300, 250. Let's do the 250 real quick. And we're going to start with the wind shading. So now you can see this uh, this jet max is these this jet stream all over the place. So, all right. Like I said, that subtropical jet. We've seen that flow. We've seen that. Uh, we need to look for that polar front jet. So we got the polar front. We're looking for. We need to go. We'll look at some winds, upper level ones. See this uh, max sticking out right here. So we can have that polar front jet. We know we had that uh, that frontal system. And then, so the polar front jet should be coming right about like that. We'll do a streamline on this. And then this will be a subtropical jet with that, with that significant jet max over the south. So. Let's go um pressure do the contours 250 millibars which is about 34,000 feet so significant low pressure system to the north the isotherms I mean, you're getting now you got a cold core it's gonna be a warm core because you got minus 50 minus 52 that's even getting colder and colder so you got a warm core uh on this low pressure all the way up in the upper levels we're still crossing on the isotherms the contours of isotherms a little bit nothing significant maybe some weak thermal advection right in that area over iowa so now the thing is these active cold fronts with all the weather at and behind the front all that uh it's a slow moving cold front so you can get that cloudiness and uh get a little bit more more snowfall because the front just doesn't plow through it's all the weather was just plowing all the moisture ahead of the front and it's just plowing through so fast it just pushes all the moisture out of the area and then whatever it snows it hits the ground and that's it but on the inactive cold front with the slope being just a slight slope it's running all that moisture up causing the lift and then all the moisture falling through the high pressure system of snow and then it's a slow moving cold front so now you're just getting more snowfall as that cold front moves slowly through the area so that's the difference between active and inactive all right station plots And then we'll do some uh, streamlines, but we can see our jet maxes here. Like, here's a jet max 130 knot winds, 150. That's eh, about 120 there. Maybe 130 something there, 140, 130. So our jet max right here about 130 knots, 125. So if we do the uh, streamlines, it'll kind of show us the flow. Let me get out of there. All right. Uh, Give it a second. Okay. So now here's what we're looking at, like our for our polar front. Coming down out of the north and then supporting that low level of that frontal system and then pushing up. I would say it's pushing more up along out of that finger of that jet sticking out. And then the subtropical jet pushing from the south and kind of ridging up over Georgia and uh, the southern states there. Okay, so 
that's pretty much that one. Real quick about, like I said, active cold fronts, slow moving cold fronts. We got an average speed of about 10 to 15 knots. And the clouds and precipitation can happen. They happen at and behind the front. That's just due to the frontal lifting when you get the cold front, that, that cold air that undercuts that warm, moist air, lifts it up. Get the frontal lift. And you get the uh, winds. Actually, that's what I was going to show you about 700. Let's go back there real quick. Okay, 700 millibars. Let's pull up the height. And then we'll just do the station plots. So we don't have to worry about anything else. We'll just pull the contours and the station plots. So what we're looking for here is on that surface front. Let me get my draw tool back. All right, we got. We have the surface front. That's a cold front. Just real quick, and then. <clears throat> Now, if you look at the winds, they're parallel to the front. When 700 millibar winds are parallel to the front like that, that is a slow-moving cold front. That's a major indication of an active cold front, a slow-moving active cold front. So, just something to look at. If you want to know, okay, the frontal system's coming through. Is it active, inactive? You know, if, there's, if it hasn't hit an area of moisture yet, you've got a cold front pushing through. So, there's no moisture. All the moisture's out here. You don't want to know if it's going to, when it gets to this moisture, what is it going to do? Is it going to undercut it and, you know, be an active cold front? Is it slow moving? Is it, you know, you can look at the 700 millibar and you got your parallel, winds are parallel to the front. You know, it's slow moving. It's a slight slope. And then it's just going to undercut that warm moisture and cause all that lift and uh, instability. So, just another indicator to look at. Okay, let's go to the radar. Now, I know this video is getting a little long. All right. We're not doing any cross-section or anything. This isn't a, isn't a significant system in the upper level. So, um, we're just going to download our latest data. We can actually pull the latest uh, surface, surface plots on this radar, too. So, we can see what the actual stations are reporting for. Uh, <clears throat> what type of weather. Uh, winds cloud cover everything we need to know there so this is around Wilmington Ohio so we got already got uh, over in Indiana there's already two inches of snow reported <clears throat> here's a uh, train spotter Let's see what we got here Hamilton Indiana that's Hamilton County and uh, 1.4 inches been reported in Carmel the city so uh 0.5 inches and by an official national weather service observer and we got 0.9 inches in that area two inches to the north in uh, bluffton wells county indiana by a train spotter some tree limbs broken off in the weight of the snow <clears throat> all right so um all these station plots let me get uh well, you guys can see these. When I cover over these station plots, the data pops up. So, kind of want you guys to see that a little bit. Okay, so I don't know if my pen would work on those or not. Let me see if we can uh, actually do a draw. I said this is over Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky. <clears throat> hundred percent uh humidity over here winds all out of the north all right, let me get back over here race that all right let's go to the west I'm gonna have to get rid of 
There we go. Let's see. Half an inch, half an inch, inch and a half. Snowfall. We got her over in Illinois. Still downloading the uh, radar data, so I just take a second. But I'm moving. I'm moving along station, so I'm not really giving any time to download anything. All right, here's the uh, St. Louis. So if we go back to that radar, now we got all the way down into St. Louis. It's starting to push out, and then precip behind that. I want to see that precip, and then uh, all that snow band is just stretching all the way down into. Uh, Actually, all the way down in Arkansas. So, all right, let's go. Looks like uh, maybe some rainfall back behind that. All right, let's go. Missouri, Iowa. Let's see what they got. Try to find some stations that are reporting any precip here. What is this? Unknown precipitation. That must be a, uh, it's an automated system, gust of 24 knots right there. So it's getting pretty windy behind that frontal system where that high pressure is. So I don't see any uh, overcast 6,000 feet, broken at 9,000, broken 2,400. Broken skies, I mean, we're cloudy all through there. We know that. We just we try to find some... Uh, a precip. What is this? Uh, no precip there. It's just showing like some scatter stuff on the radar. Let's see what that is. If we go here, could just be some uh, ground clutter or something. I want to see an actual. I want to see actual radar rain in that area. I mean, it looks like just scattered, you know, isolated showers or something, but. All right, we're getting pretty far west now. <clears throat> um, Nebraska. South Dakota. All right, let's download a loop up here real quick. Winds are still uh, 16 knots. And they're coming out of the north and then the northeast. So we do have that, you know. You see there's some wind shifts back in there too so next to that we're coming out of the northwest so as we wrapped around all the way down to the south and some areas of precip right here but no stations are actually reporting it's overcast 6,000 feet I think the radar is just picking something up let's go to the upper let's go to the uh, upper angles of the radar I mean we got precip all the way up so Should be seeing something. Should be reporting something on the ground around here. I don't see it though. Well, here's one. Well, we're in the snow now, so now we got heavy snow, broken a thousand feet. Freezing fog. Scattered 700, broken 1000, overcast 2100. Winds uh, a little north at 10 knots, so. All right, I don't see, like I said, there's a lot of green there. And that other uh, national radar showing a lot of green. But what's actually being reported by these stations, I mean, look how cluttered this is just around that radar. It's just like it's all just ground clutter. It's picking up something, but it can't really decipher what it is. So, um, like I said, anywhere these station plots are sitting right in the middle of this stuff right now, and they're not reporting any rain. I mean, if... If uh, if it wasn't raining, and it starts raining, you have to do an observation and send it out. That's the rule. That's the rule. So you, know, you can't just ignore it. Um, so if it was actually raining there, they would they would have rain in their in their observation. All right. So that's kind of boring. Um, let's get back over to. We can shoot away over here. Who's in? Was this in uh, Indianapolis? Let's get a like no unknown precipitation. Yeah, that's just a uh, an ASOS. <clears throat> it's confused. Don't know what to, don't know what to report that as. 
it's snow, so. That's snow. Purple's heavy snow. Heavier snow. Let's go look at this. I mean, yeah, there's some definitely the darker blue now because I turned the precip type off. But that's heavier snow. We got heavy snow here. And two inches, two inches, inch and a half. I mean, I'd like to see that over here in Ohio if it comes over here. Um, like I was looking at the uh, models the other night. I did a video, my last video. If you look at that one, saying uh, possibly up to two inches. But you know, we're the ground's kind of warm. I mean, it was it warmed up pretty good today. So I don't know if we're gonna get uh, two inches on the ground. Heavy snow overcast, four hundred feet, Bloomington. So, Wilmington, um, Ohio is currently overcast 11,000 feet. Winds out of the northeast 15 knots. We're getting pretty good, decent winds. So, that's pretty much that. Um, well, let's pull a loop on this thing. Let's go ahead and play the loop. Like I said, this ain't, just don't really do anything for the upper levels. I mean, there's, it's all low level stuff. Now if we do a, I don't know if we can do it on this one. I always do like to do that vertical wind profile. I can't do it on this radar. Actually, I can do it on the other one. Okay, let's go. There's a vertical wind profile on that on that one. So, one's out of the north all the way up to 4,000 feet, 3,000 feet. Then it starts to shift out of, the, out of the west and then start to back and then go up. Uh, pretty much out of the southwest all the way up so increase just you know this is a good uh tool for severe weather once you start seeing the uh wind starting to veer with height and the winds veer in speed and you can get a you know pretty good indication on rotation in the upper level so that's what that's good for not really good for the snow thing let's uh end the video here and I want to say thanks for watching and if you stuck all the way to the end really appreciate it hit the like button uh subscribe <clears throat> share my videos let me get this out i'm gonna do uh talked about uh quite a bit of learning techniques in this video i'm gonna try to break some of that stuff out into separate learning videos if you want to see that uh just give me a thumbs up make a comment and uh support the channel we'll get uh we'll get some more of that out so i want to say thanks for watching and we'll see you next time